man, this is a great interview. All right, actually, this is. <laughs> this, um, Thank you. So first things first, I want to talk to you about, I know that you are doing some work um, with your own company, training some basketball yeah. players. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, no, actually it's been good. I'm a company called Pro's Vision. And um, we train athletes anywhere from like youth age, from ages of, I don't know, five to junior, junior high kids, um, um, middle school high school, college, NBA players, and it's been working out for us thus far. I mean, for us, it's more about interactive. We know we're not just your ordinary training group where we just pass you the ball, you shoot. You know, we like to try to put you in a lot of different game situations, watch film, anything that is going to help you out with the respectable teams as you go back to. That's what we try to do, and it's been working out for us thus far. I think that's really smart because I do talk to a lot of agents and a lot of scouts in the, in the NBA, and it's always yeah. kind of hard to determine how a player's game is going to translate from either high school or college to the next level. Um, so what do you guys do to, to kind of showcase that? I mean, is there anything specific that you like to work on with these guys? Yeah, so like, you know, depending on what team you're at, you know, we like to interview some of the coaches and try to ask some questions on, you know, some of your weaknesses and strengths. That's how we start the process off. And um, then we'll try to watch film on the team that you're about to play with. And we try to put you in positions like that's the, you know, respectable system that you're going to be in. So we try to do whatever we can to, to have you have an upper hand, you know, with that team. And um, I think what's unique about our situation is a lot of guys that work with the players. Now we've all experienced and are played at a high level. So we kind of just take our experiences and try to give them as much gems as we can. What made you want to get into doing this? You know, actually, I don't know. I just, you know, I wanted I wanted a training company. I wanted to be able to help people out, you know what I mean, in some ways, especially like the youth. And then I just fell in love with it. You know, I know I wasn't going to be around basketball as much, you know what I mean, you know, since I, you know, took a step back. But um, this is one way to just keep me going. And it's it's been working out. So I know we're the big topic and you, you shook the basketball world when you decided to not come right. back to the NBA. What was like the turning point for you? What was the moment that you kind of started considering not wanting to come back or maybe just reconsidering um, that avenue? Right. I mean, I think it was just about more about like family. You know, I think, um, you know, a lot of us players, like we don't really have that much time with our families and just be able to, to spend more time with my son was like a big thing to me. You know what I mean? Taking a step back and reassessing like my priority, my priorities right now and being able to spend more time with him. You know, you look at the situation with Kobe and, you know, he got a chance to spend as much time as he can with his family and it was much needed. So the same thing for me, you know what I mean? I'm always going to be able to be around the sport of basketball. Um, you know, if I do decide to come back, I don't know, you know what I mean? I, I have that right there. You know, financially I'm fine, but it was more for me just spending more time with my family. And I know you mentioned Kobe. That was something I also wanted to ask you. I know you grew up in... California, um, I'm sure, you know, you were a big fan of his game uh, and, and a fan of who he was as a person. Um, what's your favorite Kobe story and what did you learn from him? I think, um, you know, one of my favorite Kobe stories, um, I, I mean, he has so many. I think more, more importantly, it was just watching him play and just him just inspiring some of the kids that are like from the LA area. So like, you know, me, Russ, James, um, you know, Brandon James, I used to play, um, you name it. Like, we grew up watching him. Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to play against him, it was, like, all inspiring for us. And, you know, the situation that happened to him was, you know, tragic more for the players that grew up watching him because, you know, that's all we saw. It was like our own sitcom, watching Kobe and the Lakers. Um, and I, and I think the impact that he's had on the NBA community speak volumes and, you know, how he passed away. You saw how many people, you know, was there to support him. No, absolutely. Was there a certain player who you used to look up to growing up or who inspired you to want to play basketball? Yeah, actually, I mean, it was, um, it was Iverson. You know, Allen Iverson was one, you know, that I grew up watching playing and, you know, I tried to make my game after him because he was so small and quick. 
Mm-hmm. And he was able to create his shot still at, at his height. You know, he's probably one of the best scorers at the shooting composition at, what, six feet. Um, so, yeah, he was definitely one of them. What do you think he's done for the game? I think he's done things tremendously as far as fashion. You know, he's had an impact on, you know, the NBA with fashion where they had to give us a dress code because of him. You know what I mean? But now they went back to, you know, having your own style. You see some of these players coming out with so many different unique fashion tips. And and a lot has to do with him. Um, You know, he he started the braids. That was transcending at the time when he had the braids. And like I said, just his his down-to-earth feel. Like, he was extremely down-to-earth, you know what I mean? Especially when you talk to him to this day. Like, he's always giving the other players respect. He never hates on the younger generation. You know, he's always trying to give game up. And that's somebody that you got to admire. Absolutely. So I, I kind of want to know right now, there's always these debates, but I want to hear from a, a fellow point guard who you think right now in the okay. league is like a top three uh, point guards in the league right now. Oh, man, actually, that's tough. Oh, man, it's, 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 it's a tough um, question. Because um, the point guard is now so tough, you know what I mean? Um, I, of course, you got to go with Steph. You know, he's won so many, you know, I think what he has two or three rings, right? Um, three. Three. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you knew. So three rings. <laughs> um, um, I, I like Damian Lillard. I think Damian Lillard is somebody that, you know, needs to start getting his credit and respect. I mean, he's definitely made an impact on the game within the last, you know, three, four years out of playing at a high level, you know what I mean? And especially how he came in to the playoffs too. Um, and then I probably would go with, either CP or Russ, you know, or my good friends Russ and actually my other good friend CP. I think those two, you know, have an impact on the game every time they step on the court. But, you know, I don't think they, they can be a list. I mean, because all these point guards are good. You know, Campbell Walker, you know, John Moran, mm-hmm. um, you know, Lonzo Ball, Darren Fox. Like, the list goes on and on and on. I don't think it's on one set list that you can go off because the point guard is so good right now. So I know you've also played with Chris Paul um, and, you know, I think he kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. And then now we're seeing that we, he's turned around so many different organizations and I don't think we're talking sure. enough about that. For so sure. when you watch him right now thriving with OKC, they weren't even thought about to even make a playoff run. Yeah. Um, wh- what are you seeing on the floor from him? I think, um, I think you're seeing a Hall of Fame point guard. I think you're, you're seeing a guy that has so much of an impact on the game that, you know, he doesn't take nothing away from his teammates. Um, you know, you can say what you want to say about him, but he puts wins in the wins column. Um, I think what he's doing with OKC, I think he did deserve some type of MVP consideration. I mean, it's, it's very hard to go to an organization, if that, a new organization, and have the impact that he's had. And he's had an impact on me. You know, I've, I've watched him. I studied his game for a very long time. And, I like not just what he does on the court, but off the court as well. So people like to talk about his IQ for the game. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people who watch basketball, you can kind of tell someone who's really seasoned in that department, as opposed to just kind of passing or, or doing whatever, he can kind of see the floor right. from, from a different perspective. How do you develop that? Um, I, I just think it's just, it's just you're born with it. You know, I think it just comes over time. You don't, it's not something that you just do. Um, I think something that you just naturally have, you know, your, your ability to make plays and um, to make certain reads that other players can't make. I mean, it's just it's something that is just naturally that comes to you. Um, you can study the game as well. I think that's the one way to, to become an elite point guard in the NBA. And, and the more and more you see plays, the more and more you see certain situations, you'll be able to read them before it even happens. And mm-hmm. that's just how it goes. And there's two other guys that, you know, we're kind of considered washed, so to speak, or guys that we don't, um, we won't see play again, like Melo and Jamal Crawford. Um, I know Jamal just got hurt, unfortunately, but I definitely think he deserves a spot in this league for for several years to come. Um, When you saw that they were both given like a second chance, what was your first reaction? Uh, Melo, who else you said? Jamal Crawford. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Um, fam, my man, yeah. (laughs) Um, well, first of all, with Melo, I always felt like he was a great player. I think he just was in a tough situation where he kind of had to defend himself more than anything. I think – I don't think he – they did. I think they did him wrong in Houston. I don't think, you know, 
they should have cut him or whatever they did to him in Houston. I thought he could have contributed to that team just as much as anybody else on that team. Um, but it happened. You know, he went through what he went through, but he showed everybody that he's resilient and he can come back and still make an impact on a team that arguably could be in the playoffs this year. Um, Hall of Fame player, one of the best scorers at his position. Um, and you see the stuff that he does off the court too. You know, to me, I, I don't think it's just about the impact you do on the court. It's about the impact you do off the court. If you're a great player on the court and you have the same amount of impact off the court, that that's what defines, you know, a great, great, um, not just human being, but, you know, an impactful person. You know what I mean? Um, and then Jamal Crawford, who's he's, he's been one of my best vets, you know, since I've been in the NBA. I'm happy for him. Um, he deserves another chance, I mean, to get on the court because he can still play. I think he scored like 50 plus points, you know, the previous season. And I don't know anybody that can score 50 plus points and not be on the team right now. You know, he deserves to be on the team, which he is. And I'm happy that the Nets picked him up. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, he can play for, you know, a year or two more. You said something interesting that I also want to elaborate on a little bit more is that, you know, as a reporter myself, I've gotten caught up in, you know, oh, you need to do your job. You need to report the facts or you need, even yeah. if it's, if it goes against, your, your morals as being a good person. And I feel like a lot right. of times media fails to see what these guys bring off the court and they just consider their relevance or whatever on the court. Um, yeah. How do you navigate that? Like a, as a player, how do you kind of just try to, to shut off what the media has to say, ignore social media and just focus on you? I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's your life, it's your career. Um, and you kind of, are author to your own story. So you write however you want to, you want people to view your story. So if you feel like something, if you feel strongly about something and you, you know, you're playing a certain way, you know what I mean? And that's just your game. Then you continue to do that. I mean, who cares what the media has to say about you? So for me, it was all about just locking into one common goal. For me, it was just about, I don't care how I perform on the court. I just want my team to win. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And regardless of, you know, the production, um, obviously, you know, you want to be able to produce because you're trying to get paid. You're trying to still take care of your family, but all those things will come. I think people from the media world don't really experience, you know, are not in your shoes. So they don't know the pressures that you feel. Mm -hmm. So they're just added to it. But as a player, you just got to lock in and just worry about yourself. So we have seen a lot of players come out and talk about depression, anxiety, mental health. And I think it's right. um, made a great impact so far. And I would hope that media is starting to, take notice of some of the things that they report on, the things that they say. Um, as much as you want to not care about what media or anyone else has to say about you, um, yeah. at some point, you know, you look at this stuff and it, and it does affect you either subconsciously or consciously or whatever. Um, as an athlete yourself, what do you think you can tell media to do better? Um, just be sensitive and consider, you know, some of these players and what they're going through. Um, you know, the roles are reversed, you know, you wouldn't want, you know, I don't know, 50 people a day critiquing every move that you do. Actually, you got up the wrong way and you sit down the wrong way. And actually, I don't like the food you're eating. Why are you eating that food? Are you, are you sure you want to eat that food? I, I don't like the way Ashley's doing it. Like, every day we could continue to hear that, you know, some players are just not built to, you know, take that type of criticism. You know, that's why I said you got to be very strong and, you know, um, strong will, tough minded to, you know, neglect some of that you know, that pressure and then focus on yourself. You know, the media is going to continue to do their job. Some people do it, you know, worse than some other media people. And there's some good media people out there still. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're a media person, it's all about respect. You can still report whatever story you want, but still have respect of a lot of players in the league. And there's just no better feeling when you have those two. Is this something that you work on with the players you're currently working with at uh, your facility? Are you talking to them about the mental yeah. side of the game, how to carry themselves? For sure, for sure. I think we don't talk about it too, too much, you know what I mean? Um, we always talk about the physical part of the game and coming in the gym and working on your game and then lifting and strength and conditioning. But the mental is just as important as the physical. So how can, you work on the, how can you work on the mental? You know, one way is to, you know, you know, self-meditation, you know what I mean? Really get into a zone where you're locked in and it's just about you. And the times when things are not going so well, practice, practice and trying to be positive with yourself. It's easy to self-doubt yourself and to be negative. Um, and then we all know that like, not everything is gonna be perfect. You know, you're gonna have some 
you know, whether it's family issues, financials, whatever, that's going to like try to bring you down as a player, but you still got to be able to produce on the floor at all costs. And how can you do that? You know, you got to be able to practice and continue to, you know, give yourself some self love. Mm -hmm. And then um, I know that you also have talked about, you know, religion being a part of um, your, yep. your choice to, to leave the NBA and focus more on for that. Sure. What does that look like for you? For me, it's just about building faith. I mean, to me, you know, we all have our thing, you know what I mean? And I love, you know, be able to, you know, help others. You know, my religion helps a lot of people, you know, in so many different ways. And um, to be able to, to build faith it, through that, you know, it kind of helps me on the court too as well. You know, it, it just goes hand in hand. So um, it's my thing. It's something that, you know, I devote myself to, you know, and I, I try to get better at it. You know, it's not something that's perfect, you know what I mean? But I try to get better each day and try to be the best possible human I could possibly be. I think that's where a lot of people struggle is being able to, to dig within themselves and figure out themselves as people For sure. um, and understand like their purpose. So I want to know what is, what is your purpose? I think my purpose is to help as many people um, um, get to a point in life where they're um, satisfied with their uh, success. You know, whatever level that is, if it's a kid that just wants to play high school varsity and he just wants to make the team and, you know, I have something to contribute to that, that's, I've done my job. Um, if it's somebody that's struggling mentally and they need some type of help, you know what I mean, to get through something like a problem that they're going through in life, um, I've done my job. So just try to help as many people as I could possibly can. I know it sounds cliche, but it really is the truth, you know, I think. We're not here on this earth for a very long time. The, you know, we never know what make it happen to us. You know, we can be gone tomorrow, God forbid. But, mm -hmm. you know, if I can have as much impact on as much individuals as I can, then I've done my job. You know, regardless of what anybody says about me, I'm going to still do it. Who do you turn, turn to when you're facing challenges, adversity, or when you're feeling low? Yeah, I mean, my faith, you know, in God. And, you know, I have a great support system with my parents, uh, my sister, uh, family, and friends. So, I have a great support system. If you have a great support system, you know, it's kind of like half the battle that you're going through. They know everybody else how you are. So they kind of put things in perspective and try to give you that strength through that. What is the highest pressure situation that you've experienced and how did you handle it? Um, I think for me, I think when I got to Dallas, you know, I was, always, I was a starting point guard, you know, pretty much my whole entire time before I got to Dallas. I started for Dallas. Um, Derek Fisher comes and, you know, he, I don't even think he practiced at all. He just came in and he started and I was moved to the bench. And it was tough for me because, you know, I felt like I put in all this work to be a starting point guard in the NBA. Um, and then to, you know, obviously, you know, he's, Derek Fisher has won championships and he's done many things. But for me as a player, you know, I felt like I took a step back. Mm -hmm. And then I had to really, really analyze myself like, okay, what's the next possible thing that I can do to help have, have an impact on a team? You know, the worst thing you could do is just to pout or to not be a part of the team and not try to contribute or be negative anyway. For me, it was like, I'm going to be as positive as I possibly can. I'm going to be in the gym way more than he is. I'm going to try to be in the gym way more than anybody on my team. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to bounce back in a strong way. And I did, you know, I got a lot of love from Rick Carlisle, who's one of the, you know, top coaches in the NBA and how I handled that situation. And I feel like a lot of guys, um, they, they look at that as like a demotion, right? Um, we saw that yeah. happen, happen to Melo. Um, but also, like, I, I think we also lose sight of like, you know, if you do come off the bench, maybe you're the one that's closing. You know, you're closing out the game, which is just as important, if not the most important than starting the game. Why is like there this stigma of like, like you want us to start, even though if you make a bigger impact off the bench or in the closing seconds of the game? Right. I mean, everybody wants to be the best at their job, you know, and – you know, we look at starters as the guys ahead of whoever, you know, in that position, uh, the best. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that notion's kind of changed when you see guys like Lou Will and Ginobili and guys that come off the bench and have so much of an impact where they're one of the best players on the team, period. So, like, I think teams shied away from putting their best players in the, the starting lineup so they can have some firepower coming off the bench. And I think at the end of the day, it's not about who starts, it's about who finishes, right? I would agree with that 100%. <laughs> so what three events made the biggest impact on who you are today? 
three events that made the biggest impact of who I am today, I would say um, definitely my son. Um, that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, my faith, like I mentioned earlier, and basketball. You know, I've learned so much through basketball where it's feel like it's changed me as a person. You know, I've been through some tough times and it helped me stay focused. You know, I don't think without basketball, I don't know who, where I'll be, you know, if it wasn't for basketball. What were some of those challenges that you, you had to face? Um, I think this, you know, you just, you just deal with daily life issues. You know what I mean? It's not always perfect. Everybody thinks like, you know, NBA players go through perfect lives because, you know, we may have a lot of money or, you know, material success, but that stuff doesn't really make you happy. You know, you may go through some stuff where like if somebody in your family has passed away, um, somebody's struggling, you know, with a sickness and you got to be able to have to navigate and, and try to get through that. And basketball has been kind of like a safe haven for me. Who are some people that you've met only one time, but they made the biggest impression on you? Man, this is a great interview. All right, actually, this is, <laughs> this is um, Thank you. Um, I met only one time. Oh, mm -hmm. Steve Nash. Oh, yeah, I, I need to know what that was about. I need to know that whole interaction. Yeah, man, actually, it was, um, so when I, we have the same agency and I've been dying to like work out with him because I know there's some things that he can help me with my game. I finally got the opportunity to meet with him and not just meet with him. He helped me with some pick and roll things and things that I've never thought I'll be getting it from one of the Hall of Fame point guards. And when I met him, he was just so down to earth and so humble. I mean, he literally walked through the gym and you couldn't even recognize him because he wasn't wearing nothing like expensive. He was just coming in with like a shirt and some shorts. And, you know, he walked modestly like throughout the whole gym. And, you know, if anybody did recognize him, he'll stop and talk and he'll say hi. And to me, that speaks volumes. Like to be a Hall of Fame player and to still act the way you act. I mean, I, I have nothing to say, nothing but great things to say about Steven Nash. And it rubbed off on me. I definitely I need to meet him one day. He's one of those guys yeah. that I just like, um, like you said, he just looks really cool. He doesn't have yeah. an ego. He's just like, yeah. he literally just wants to hoop and, and talk and just talk to people, help people out. Yeah. yeah. He yeah, seems sure. like a really he, cool guy. Yeah. No, you, if you get a chance to do anything with him, I would. No, he's, he's a really special person. Well, I might need you to uh, hook me up with that if uh, possible. Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would. Yeah. Thank you. And um, just some other like random questions. Is there anything that you collect? I'm assuming probably sneakers, but anything outside the sneakers? No, I'm not really a materialistic type guy. Like I, I like, you know, I enjoy looking at fashion or shoes or whatever, but I don't really collect too many things where I got to like keep it for myself. You know what I mean? I think that I'm, I'm a father, you know, the only things I collect are like bay toys, like my son that plays with them and stuff. Those are toys that <laughs> I, that, or those are things that I take advantage of is collecting for him and stuff. So not me personally. What is your creative outlet? It could be like writing or yoga or whatever. What, what's, a, what's a way that you like to kind of to kind of escape, um, get into your, you know, your own thoughts and uh, what's yeah. something like that for you? Uh, I think recently I take, I take walks you know, early in the morning. I go wake up real, real early in the morning. So I might walk or jog in the morning. Um, that helps me to get away from, you know, whatever I, the world for a little bit and just to be on to my own. I play video games every now and then. I still play video games. So, mm -hmm. so any, either one of those two things is fine for me. Um, who would be one celebrity that you would want to have dinner with? Beyonce. Beyonce. Okay. Why? Yes, for sure. Because, I mean, she's just an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. um, she's talented. I think she works extremely hard. She's a GOAT. You know, one of the greatest of all time artists that, you know, has been doing this thing for a very long time. And I think you could take some things from her craft and move forward. What's one small thing a person can do each day that can impact their life? Read. Yeah, it could be reading, you know, like a, you know, whether it's reading a spiritual, you know, type setting book or a good book from an author. Uh, reading, you know, you can read clippings, uh, quotes from people that say certain things, um, quotes. I mean, just read. Yeah. What could you give a 30 minute lecture on if you had to do it just last minute? Basketball, for sure. I could, I could talk about basketball in and out, like with my eyes closed. So, yeah. And if you could master any skill outside of basketball, what skill would you want to master? Golf. Golf is definitely tough. Like, it's a very, very hard sport for me. Um, I just started getting into it, 
mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm okay, but I just started getting into it. And um, I think if I can master that, then I've mastered everything on this <laughs> Yeah, you know, I asked another player the same question and he said golf and I, I can't play. I cannot, oh, play. I miss the ball every time I try to hit it. It's horrible. Yeah, I got a buddy named Sean and I beat on him every time in golf. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, he just can't beat me and no more and stuff, so, yeah. That's hilarious. And so, um, just a couple more questions for you. I know you're really busy, and again, I do appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. It means a lot. Um, so far with this whole bubble situation, I know you're probably keeping tabs on everything that's going on. Um, how do you think the NBA has handled everything? I think they're doing a pretty good job. I think there was a report that came out that said they have zero uh, positive, or, yeah, zero tests that were positive, or negative, I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, I think anytime you had that and there's that many players in a bubble, you're doing a good job. I think Adam Silver, Chris Paul, and those guys, they did a good job of having those guys in one bubble, staying safe and giving us content and a game to entertain, or, you know, to be entertained while we're at home. And I know there was talks of you potentially coming back to the league. And I, I, I keep yeah. up with all of it. I'm like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. You know, as like a yeah. media person myself, like I hear things and then, I hear a difference about yeah. the story. Yeah. Um, is yeah. coming back to the NBA something that you are still like considering in the future or right now, or are you just not even focused on that? Yeah, I'm, I, so there was a story that came out like last week. I did an interview with somebody last week and I said they had overhyped it, you know what I mean? And I wasn't necessarily talking about the Lakers. I was talking about the media overhyped it. Um, and they were obviously going off of the fact that, you know, I went to the game and I was there and stuff, but they don't really know the behind the scenes of what went down. The Lakers are a great organization, um, you know, that, you know, if I eventually come back and I play for it, I'll be more than excited for it. And Clippers as well. Um, there is, it's not just those two teams. There's other teams too that, you know, that would have my interest if I were to come back. Um, at the time, I just wasn't ready mentally. You know what I mean? I just wasn't there where, I felt like I could go on the court and, you know, produce the way I want to produce. You know, I wanted to handle some things, you know, back at home and have a different passion. You know what I mean? So I don't know. That time may come. You know what I mean? I still have time. I'm still in the gym. I still work out. You know what I mean? I'm still doing what I have to do. So when that time is right, then I I could make my decision. Well, that would be pretty cool to to play with LeBron. Um, For sure. I know playing uh, in the East for so long with the the Pacers, you definitely faced him a lot. Um, Yeah, I know. What would that mean for you eventually down the road if that does end up happening? Well, I mean, it would mean a lot. I mean, you're talking about one of the greatest players, if not the greatest, to play this game. Um, I think his impact on the game is it goes, you know, second to none. I think his IQ, you know, can help me out as a player. Even, you know, at the age that I'm at, you can still learn. I mean, when you watch him at that age and he's playing at an MVP level, you just like, how does he do that? It's not so much as his physical attribute, it's because he really knows the game, he understands the game, and he takes care of his teammates on the court as well. So before I, I exit this interview, I just, I like players <laughs> to be able to have an outlet where they could be themselves, um, tell their yeah. side of the story. I try to always come yeah. from a place of empathy, compassion, um, no judgment. So is there anything else that I may have missed that you want to talk about, get off your chest, or, or anything that you're passionate about? No, I just, I think for me, it's just about basketball and, and being able to do what I can for this company and help as many players out, you know, that are youth up. Um, I don't think we do it enough. I think the youth needs us. I think we can do a better job of instilling our experience and our confidence into them. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, helping them on the court, whether that's helping them through life, they, def- they desperately need us, you know what I mean? And I think we need more of it. Well, thank you again. I really do appreciate your time. I know you are super busy and I wish you the best of luck and whatever you decide to do next.